For a couple of weeks ago, I was at Essen Spiel 2016, and it's a big uh, board gaming convent in Europe. Uh, I think it's the biggest in, in Europe, and uh, I got to see a lot of games, and one of them, of course, I bought a lot of games as well. One of them was Flemme Rouge, a game designed by Asker Sams Grannerud, and it's a game for two to four players. It plays in about 30 to 45 minutes, and it's for the ages 8 plus. Let's take a look at how the game is played. And here we have the game. In the, the game comes with six different um, tracks you can use. And I have chosen the first one that is recommended for your first play. There's also some others. And in this track, we, we do not have any um, um, hills going up or going down. Some of the others you can see here, you have red and you have uh, uh, blue. And red is indicating you're going uphill, and blue is indicating that you will be going downhill. There are some special rules for when you come into these sections of the board. This here is the track that I built. Each player will receive a player board, and each player will receive two cyclists, a sprinter and a ruler. You will receive separate decks of cards for the sprinter and for the ruler. For the ruler you have cards from the values 3 to 7, that is how many spaces that the rider he can move. And each value of the card you have three of, and the sprinter has the values two to five, and he has three cards with the value of nine. Each card you have three of. You have this card, player eight card, where you can see the different values for the sprinter and for the ruler, and that you have three of each value. You also have a player aid for the different phases in the game. There are three phases in the game. And each player will receive two cyclists in plastic. The ruler is kind of sitting down low on the bike, and you can see he has an R on his back. The sprinter is half standing up on the bike, and he has an S marked on his back. So. That's the way you can see the difference on them, that one is sitting low on the, on the bike and has an R, and the other one is standing up and has an S on his back. We also have some exhaustion cards in the game, one for the ruler. They all have the value of 2, and it's the same for the sprinter. Exhaustion cards with the value of 2. I'll explain in a moment how these cards will be used. The goal of the game is to be the first one to get, get a cyclist over the finish line. And if more uh, will end their turn passing the finish line, then it's the player furthest ahead that will be the winner of the game. In the game you have three phases. The first phase is called the energy phase. And here you will select cards for each of your player. You will draw four cards. And you can choose if you want to start with the sprinter or the ruler, but you have to do them one at a time. So in this case, I could start with the ruler. I will draw four cards, and I would look at them, and then I would choose one card to play this turn. And I might say, I'll play the six. Then I put the card down here beside the ruler. The others will be um, put faced up underneath the stack of cards. After that, you will do the same for the sprinter. Take four cards, and then have a look at them, and choose one card to play. Maybe I will take the nine. 
and the other ones will go down here. And next we will go into the into the movement phase. And all players will do this simultaneously. All players will choose cards for their riders. I have just laid one up for a sample, but all the others would also choose cards for their riders. The next phase is the movement phase and all play, uh, players will reveal what cards they have played. And next we will move the riders forward. You will start with moving the rider that is furthest ahead and to the right. So it would be this guy over here that would be moved first, then second, this guy, and then the black one, the blue, and so forth. Let's say the red he moved four. And the other, he moved six. And then we have this black sprinter. He moved nine. We played a card on him, so he is going to move nine. Here. And the next one is the blue. Let's say he moved one, two, three, four, five. He moved five. And the next one here, he moved seven. And you always, if the lane on the right here is uh, empty, then you always move the rider into the right. So at the end, there is no, uh, there will be no uh, riders in the left lane if the right lane is empty. So you always push the rider in to the right. And now the black ruler, he played a six. And in this case, there is no room for him here on the space, so he will be moved behind the others. So he wasted one move in this case. And let's say that we had a green that played a four. And then he played up here, like this. When all the riders have been moved, then we go to the end phase. First of all, we're going to discard all the cards that have been played. These cards will no longer be in the game. So you can't use them anymore. They are out of the game. And then we will apply slipstream. And slipstream, you will start with the player that is furthest behind. So this green guy is the Play, uh, the rider that is furthest behind. If there is only one space, one empty space up to a group of players, then he will get uh, into a slipstream and he will be moved up one space. Next, we will look at look at the next group, one too many, uh, one to more players, and there is also one empty space up to the black rider, so the whole group will be moved one. Um, space forward. Next, we will assign exhaustion cards and we will look for players that are in front of a group or just alone. If there are no riders in front of a, a cyclist, then he will receive an exhaustion card. And in this case, the black sprinter, he will get an exhaustion card. That is, this card is only with the value of two, and it will be put into a deck underneath. When you run out of cards, you will um, shuffle the cards and use the shuffle card later in the game. And this is a turn in the game. Now let's play another round. You start with selecting four cards for one of your riders, and every player will be doing this at the same time. And here I think I'll choose this one. And we'll do the same for the sprinter. And maybe he will choose this one this time. And 
And when every player has chosen two cards, then we all reveal our cards. And it's time to move the riders. First we'll start with the black sprinter. He moves two. Then the red would have played a card. And let's say he moved six. Now, we will start with the player furthest behind and apply slipstream. He will be moved up one. There are two empty spaces here, so this group will not be moved this time. This group have one space off to the red, so they will be moved one. And now it's time to apply exhaustion cards. The red ruler, he will receive one card. And the red sprinter and the green sprinter will also receive an exhaustion card. Because there are no players in front of them, then they get exhausted, they have to work harder. And you will continue playing like this until you get a player over the finish line. In, in this example, there is no hills on the board. If you had had this one played, then this means that if you start your turn in a blue space, and the blue space is going downhill. In this case, you will always be moving at least five spaces. So if I played a two movement, I would move my rider five spaces. So it goes a bit quicker and it's easier to go downhill. If on the other hand, you had, um, you're going uphill, then no slipstream will be applied. And you can only move up to five. So if I had played a card that would move me seven, then I would only be moved five. So here you wouldn't want to waste some of your good cards because you can only move five on this space. So this, these will give another uh, variation to the game and they can be applied. But for your first game, it is suggested that you start with the normal board so you get familiar with the game. And in the game, if you are an experienced player, then you can start the game with having added two extortion cards to your decks. So you have already a disadvantage before you start the game. And there you have it. This is how Flamin Rouge is played. A pretty quick game and an easy game to teach and learn. And it, it a game where everybody is active at the same time when you are choosing your card and laying them down uh, you're all doing it simultaneously I kind of feel like I'm in a real racing game and watching the riders move along the track and getting slipstream and of course also receiving exhaustion cards try to avoid get too many in your deck and I think it's a clever design game and it really works well the only thing I could wish for is that maybe we could uh, there could come an expansion for the game so you could play up to six players and maybe you could have some tiles where there would be free lanes on the tracks and um, so there could be some places on the uh, on the track that could be more cyclists on the board and um, I really enjoyed this game and if you like racing games then I think you would probably also enjoy this game and it's a quick game as well so I can highly re recommend this game Flemish Rouge